So it is not possible, again, to move Krishna simply by serving according to regulative principles. So Vaidhi Bhakti will not bring you to the ultimate goal. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, the son of Mother Yashoda, is accessible to those devotees engaged in spontaneous loving service. But he is not as easily accessible to mental speculators. To those striving for self-realization by severe austerities and penances, or to those who consider the body the same as the self. This verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam and is spoken by Srila Sukadev Goswami. It concerns, it concerns the statement about Krishna's being subjugated by the gopis and thus glorifying them. So it's a verse which is glorifying the gopis. Beginning with Mother Yashoda also. Even in motherly love, her control over Krishna is there. What to speak of Radharani? <laughs> Text two hundred and twenty-eight. Atta eva gopi bhava kari angikara ratri dina chinte rata krishnera vihara. Therefore, one should accept the mood of the gopis in their service. In such a transcendental mood, one should always think of the pastimes of Sri Rata and Krishna. We understand that actually here it's not specific, it's a little bit more broad. So we may choose. Text 229 Sita Dehe Chinta Kare Tahani Sevana Sakhi Bhave Paya Rata Krishna Racharana. After thinking of Rata and Krishna and their pastimes for a long time and after getting completely free from material contamination, one is transferred to the spiritual world. There, the devotee attains an opportunity to serve Rata and Krishna as one of the gopis. So, a very clear description. <laughs> After we think a long time about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, so what we are doing is we are sharing 
about the pastimes again and again. So we think about them, we are meditating about them. So by meditating about them more and more, the heart actually gets more and more sticking to it, cannot actually come back out because the taste is higher than the taste outside. But we have to actually experience this. And when we experience this after a long time, it's written here, when we experience this, the side effect is we will be completely free from material contamination because our attachment now is shifted. Now we are attached to these lilas. We also want to take part, we also want to be in that. And then one is transferred to the spiritual world. And there we get the opportunity to serve Radha and Krishna as one of the gopis. So as one of the gopis in this I, I see that Prabhupada actually, like we wrote the last two times, when he's saying the gopis, he he's meaning that as an overview. That may mean Manjari, that may mean something else if somebody likes another mood. But actually, in our case, we want to go for kinkery. So, and this is the way, and it's so clearly, so clearly, after thinking of Radha and Krishna and their pastimes for a long time, and after getting completely free from material contamination, one is transferred to the spiritual world. There, the devotee attains an opportunity to serve Radha and Krishna as one of the gopis. Isn't that wonderful? There's a purport by Srila Prabhupada. And this is also wonderful, actually. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur commands that the word Siddha Deha, perfected spiritual body, refers to a body beyond the material cross body, composed of five elements, and the subtle astral body composed of mind, intelligence, and false ego. In other words, one attains a completely spiritual body fit to render service to the transcendental couple Radha and Krishna. Sarvopati vinir muktam tat paratvena nirmalam. Ma Yoga Shakti, you had some question? No? You want to make a command? No? So it's, it's, it's so clear. We will get rid of the cross body and we will get rid of mind, intelligence, false ego. Then we are in the real ego. I am a maidservant of my Swami. When one is situated in his spiritual body, which is beyond this cross and subtle material body, 
He is fit to serve Radha and Krishna. That body is called Siddha Deha. The living entity attains a particular type of cross body in accordance with his past activities and mental condition. In this life, the mental condition changes in different ways and the same living entity gets another body in the next life according to his desires. The mind, intelligence and false ego are always engaged in an attempt to dominate material nature. According to that subtle astral body, one attains a cross body to enjoy the objects of one's desires. According to the activities of the present body, one prepares another subtle body and according to the subtle body, one attains another cross body. This is the process of material existence. However, when one is spiritually situated and does not desire a cross or subtle body, he attains his original spiritual body. However, when one is spiritually situated and does not desire a cross or subtle body, he attains his original spiritual body, as confirmed by Bhagavad Gita 4.9 Chaktva Deham Puna Janma Naiti Imam Eti Sarjuna. One is elevated to the spiritual world by the spiritual body and is situated either in Goloka Vrindavan or another Vaikuntha planet. In the spiritual body there are no longer material desires and one is fully satisfied by rendering service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Radha, and her Krishna, <laughs> Radha and Krishna. <laughs> this is the platform of Bhakti, Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakti, Uchate. When the spiritual body, mind, and senses are completely purified, one can render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His concerts. In Vaikuntha, the concerts is Lakshmi and in Goloka, Vrindavan, the concert is Srimati Ratarani. In the spiritual body, free from material contamination, one can serve Radha Krishna or Lakshmi Narayan. When one is thus spiritually situated, he no longer thinks of his own personal sense gratification. The spiritual body is called Siddha Deha, the body by which one can render transcendental service unto Radha and Krishna. The process in that of engaging the transcendental senses in loving devotional service. This verse specifically mentions Sakhi Bhave Poya Radha Krishna Racharana. 
only transcendental elevated persons in the mood of the gopis can engage in the service of the lotus feet of Radha and Radha's Krishna. Isn't that, isn't that perfect? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he wrote one sentence which uh, caused a question for me. Yeah. It's last uh, paragraph, uh, maybe third or second uh, sentence. When spiritual body, form, and sense completely purified, I'm just translating from Russian. I cannot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then it allowed to serve Supreme Lord and this concert. This interesting point, but then spiritual body, not just body, spiritual body, mind, and sense completely purified. Because for me, Siddha Deha means spiritual body, it's already pure. What does it mean when it will be purified? Hmm. I was also thinking about the same point. I can just share my thoughts. I don't know if this is true or not. Because Prabhupada is actually giving two examples in, in one sentence. He's saying you may attain a spiritual body and go to Lakshmi Narayan. As we know, you can come back from the service of Lakshmi Narayan. You can even come back to earth and then again engage like now when Mahaprabhu was there. It's especially uh, a very good point to come back and step out of the, of the service of Lakshmi Narayan because there you may still have some impurity. But then you can come back and learn what is completely selfless service and go then back into the seva of uh, Radharani as Manjuri or Kinkari. That may one point. But, of course, there are also other points. As we know, we actually, uh, Guru Manjuri is giving us in the hand of Rupa Manjuri. And Rupa Manjuri is actually um, teaching us more. And then there's also Ananga Manjuri, which also has an influence of us. So it depends from which side you want to see that you are still a little bit more purified for the seva because it's your personal seva. Like when Rarani is taking you to some cave and is teaching you some songs that you may wake up Mohan, when he falls in a swoon. So you will be more expert also. So these are just different thoughts. But please share your thoughts and uh, your, um, your knowledge. I think you have more than, than me, because Radha Charan, at least you were sannyasi. I'm just a fallen householder, what I can say. Just recently, Gurudev, she's telling me so much about you still say yes and go away from the door. <laughs> no, I, it's not now for me, it's a question of proudness. Uh, no, I, I understood what you explained. I understood. It's uh, also, you gave example of, uh, from Brihad Bhagavatam, even on match, but you mean this how Gopakumar returned from Vaikuntha to Earth. And yes, I agree, it's the question of Sanchari and Sthai. Even on the level of spiritual body, it's possible. It's what uh, Ananga Manjari is taking. I understood. Radha. Thanks. Thank you very much.
So even on the spiritual platform, we can still have this mood of not be completely straight. So we see <clears throat> it's not so easy to be stay. It's an ongoing process and we we may look in the mirror and see what we are doing the whole day and then we may pray that we will be corrected because we cannot correct ourselves. We need the help of Swamini. So, but what we can do is we can see it. We can watch ourselves, then see, ah, oh, still, this is not stai. But I don't know how to get rid of this, so please, Swamini, help me. And from my experience, and uh, also from experience from others, I heard, it is like that, that after such a prayer, you find that you have some special attraction to a special book or a special verse in a book. And then in this moment when you read this, some point is hitting. And then you see, oh yes, help is already there. <laughs> help is already there. I understood one point more on this path. So this is actually how it works. It's, it's very, very personal. If we are personal, if we pray, if we take our heart and say here, you know, I, I offer you all my anartas, all my bad habits, all my, yeah, my uncleanliness. So please take it. I don't have anything else to offer because I have no qualities. I have nothing, but I can give you this. I offer. Please take. And Swamini will accept step by step and change it. Give something back more pure. Um, I receive inspiration from you. What I understood about uh, purification of spiritual body. Uh, what I understood from Shilgur, the few statements, completely natural, means it's your own, nothing mixed. Because before, if I was Sanchari, I'm still Sanchari, but I heard so many other Harikatva. Glorification of Dwaraka, glorification of Matfura, glorification of Rama, and all this stuff inside. It's creating different desires because it has also blissful nature. And this is not material. <laughs> it's spiritual. It's the question of purifying your own spiritual nature. And now I understand. Today. Thank you for making it more and more clear, actually. That's wonderful. Yes. Purification means we will find like Prabhupada was giving here, his original spiritual body, it's written here. He attains his original spiritual body, his original position. And this is the point, we are all, we all have already a spiritual nature. It may show up in a material world or not. Some people I can see because I know also the, the form of them and I know the nature of them. I can see, oh yes, <laughs> it really fits a lot. But it may or may not. But actually you have this already. You are a very individual person. And Radharani and even Krishna Sorry, forgive me, Krishna. <laughs> Loves us like we are. Exactly like that. Because even in material world, if we get children, we love them as they are. 
whatever they may be, we love them. Because we, we have no control. And Radharani and Krishna, actually, they don't want to have control. <laughs> so they also don't have. You understand? This is the, the rasa view. They don't want to control you. So they accept you as you are because you are perfect. But in the rasa, they accept you as you are out of the same matter like we. You, you just accept another person and you accept the law of the spe speciality, the law of the special law of this person like it is. For example, could we have any idea that Radha Charandas shouldn't be like he is? No, we love him like he is. Isn't it? Just like he is, because he is Radha Charandas. Oh my Yoga Shakti, she is what she is, and we love her like she is. All of you, isn't it? Sundaram. I, I could never imagine that Sundaram is, is, is another, in another mood from today to, uh, on, you know. He's just, you know, an other person. We would be wondering, at least, maybe we would be a little bit, you know, disturbed. Where's my Sundaram? He was always like this and that and like this. So we all have our individual nature and this is already there. It's original and we are loved like that. And we just have to go the way to be exactly that. To get again exactly this and nothing else. And what's the difference? Radharani is helping us here already? More indirect? And she will help us in the spiritual world to get exactly what we are again. So cleaning a little bit more, even in the spiritual world, isn't it? Because we always make a big difference. Yeah, now we are in a material world and then we will be in a spiritual world. But actually, this is not a fact. We are already in a spiritual world. We just don't accept it. Because there's a description. Threefold of the whole existence is completely spiritual, it means selfless mood. One part is covered by clouds, means false ego clouds. There we have this idea that we could do something without Radharani and Krishna. That's the only difference, but this is inside the spiritual existence. So we are already, if we just get rid of these clouds, by taking shelter, taking shelter, taking shelter, pray. And please, please, now that you are all here, devotees, please, give me your blessings. Please pray for me, honestly. We want to make it. That's why we are here. And we want to, to, to share our feelings, get more close, to help each other. That's why we are here. So let us attain again our original spiritual body and position. And Ramananda Rai is telling this now to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because it's the sweet will of the Lord that Ramananda Rai is telling him how 
to go this way, how we can attain this highest goal. Another transcendental lila. Text 230. Gopi Anugatya Vina Aishvarya Kyane Bachi Lehana Hipoi Brachendanandane Unless one follows in the footsteps of the Gopis, he cannot attain the service of the lotus feet of Krishna. The son of Nanda Maharaj. If one is overcome by knowledge of the Lord's opulence, he cannot attain the Lord's lotus feet even though he is engaged in devotional service. It's so clear, isn't it? <laughs> Unless one follows in the footsteps of the gopis, he cannot attain the service of the lotus feet of Krishna. And we know which is the first gopi of all gopis. So unless we don't accept her in her original position, how we could serve the lotus feet of Krishna. Even Mother Yashoda, if you think about the exchange of Mother Yashoda with Radharani, which it is described in Radharasa Sudanidi and Vilapkusumanjali, it's amazing. Mother Yashoda loves Radharani so much and she is praising her. She is like She's praising her like she would be completely aware who is Radharani. But she is not, because she stays in her mood, so she cannot be really aware. But she's praising her like this, kissing her, holding her to her heart and cuddling her. And she's loving her so much, like her Krishna. Just imagine, that means she also accepts the position of Radharani and the position of the gopis, she accepts. Otherwise, she couldn't be in her position, in her seva. Because Radharani is giving her, after all, she is a part of Radharani, she is giving her this power to love Krishna. Because Radharani is the source, even of that kind of love. And what to speak of others. So if we don't accept Radharani, how we could serve the lotus feet of Krishna, when we know he, could, he can only be moved by pure love. If we don't accept pure love, don't take shelter, don't make a connection, how we could serve Krishna? It's not possible. So even if, if one accepts Krishna, in the mood of Aishwarya, no way. So there's another uh, purport from Srila Prabhupada. 
One can worship Lakshmi Narayan by the process of Vidhi Mark. So, Vaidhi Bhakti or Vidhi Bhakti. Worshipping the Lord with regulative principles according to the instructions of the Shastra and the spiritual master. However, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Radha, Krishna, you see Prabhupada is always, when he is writing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, now he is writing first Radha, <laughs> Radha, Krishna, cannot be directly worshipped by this process. So, it's, this is a statement. However, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Radha Krishna cannot be directly worshipped by this process, not by Vaidhi Bhakti. The dealings between Radha and Krishna and the gopis are devoid of the opulences of Lakshmi Narayan. The process of Vidhi Mark following the regulative principles is utilized in the worship of Lakshmi Narayan, whereas the process of spontaneous service following in the footsteps of the gopis, who are the denizens of Brindavan, is transcendentally more advanced and is the process whereby Radha and Krishna are worshipped. Did you understand that clearly? I was shocked when I was reading this, because Prabhupada is writing it so clear. You can not, not, not serve Radha Krishna in the mood of Vaidhi Bhakti. It's not possible. You will go to Lakshmi Narayan. This is Prabhupada's statement. It's not possible. If you want to go to Radha and Krishna, you have to take the transcendental, more advanced process. And this is Raganuga. Uh, can you give some practical examples for our life? For example, we all go into the temple room, where is our Radha Mohanji? What does it mean for us? I didn't hear the question clear, sorry. I, I will try again. Can you give practical examples? For example, we have here Radamohan in Temple. What does it mean for us? Then, which mood means convert to us Radamohan to Lakshminara and this way to like what we must avoid. Actually, you can give this example. I know you can. Please do. I don't want to talk the whole time alone. I, I, I just can, a very simple example. If I'm coming to the temple room, first thing what we are doing, I am doing, I'm giving a basis. I'm giving a basis to And in which mood I'm doing, why I'm doing if I am doing because it must be, because it's written in Shastra, with me, I am going to Vaikuntha. If I'm do, if I'm will do like this, this means I'm doing oh I'm doing this ritual without mood. It's religious and also way to Vaikuntha. But what does it mean to worship Radha Krishna? In Vrindavan, is main in particular mood. Actually, without Swarup, I don't know how it's possible. <laughs> without mood, without Swarup, I don't know. Without this house, uh, Srila Prabhupada is written. If I will not go by the step of Gopi. In our case, the step of uh, Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, how they come in inside of Kunja. In which mood? What's the design inside of them when they come inside of Kunja? There is Radha and Krishna. Otherwise, what I will do, uh, I'm just going to Vaikuntha. 
Actually, yes, that's that's a, a very nice uh, question. Very practical also, and we can see this in, in, in different uh, uh, aspects. We can also be in, in fear towards Gurudev and follow just rules that we don't make any offense, you know, and like this. But then we will end with Lakshmi Narayan, if this is our stai. So, for example, if I offer something, I go in the kitchen and, you know, we all eat, usually. So we cook. <laughs> so it starts like, I am cooking. For whom? For whom you are cooking? Yeah, I'm cooking for Radharani. I'm cooking for Krishna. Really? Show me. Actually, the mood is, I am a servant of Radha. Radha is cooking for Krishna. Because of love, she is cooking for him. And she is the best cook. Even Mother Yashoda, I mean, you just imagine, even Mother Yashoda, which mother is giving the service of cooking for her completely beloved child to someone else? This is one of the main exchanges of love for a mother to cook for the child. How it's possible that she is giving this to Radharani? Yeah, we hear in the scriptures, outside argument is, yeah, she was blessed and whatever she cooks, you know, like that. But actually, this is not the point. The mother wants to give the most, the highest love to her child. That's the real point. So if we would cook for Krishna, what amount of love could we offer? In Vaidhi Bhakti, we can offer all the rules. Oh, it has to be very clean. And we have to cut, to cut out all bad pieces and we have to be very aware what we use what kind of stuff it should be always in uh, goodness like this yeah it's one kind of meditation but do you really think that krishna is satisfied with that or you go in the kitchen and say oh radhe Please, may I help you? What would you like to cook for your beloved? I will assist. Ah, you would like to cook some sweet rice. Okay, I can help. I will wash the rice and I will bring. And please cook for your beloved. I will assist, assist you. So this is a practical example also, if we do seva for the, for the deities, then we should meditate that we are in our swarup, like we would do in the spiritual world, because we are already in the spiritual world, only our mind is cutting that and telling you, no, you are not. Please mind, yes, we are. Let us help Radharani. Please, let us help Radharani. Try it. So actually there are different moods we can do the seva. So, and yes, in the end, it will have different um, ergebnisse, what is called? Uh, results, yes, different results.
If you want to offer fear to Krishna, why the mark? Oh, please, please forgive me. Maybe some too much chili. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe too less milk, or maybe only the milk from the supermarket not good enough, or whatever. Yes, you can offer like this. I was doing it in practice in in former times, always in fear. And somebody gave me a book in this moment, something changed in my mind. Somebody gave me a book and there was written, what you can do wrong in the seva in the temple. And it was a book like, you know, you should not wear this and this color clothes. You should not, you should not, you should not, you should not, you should not. In this moment, when I started to read this book after some pages, I made like, not possible. I quit. It's really impossible. And one time I was standing there with fresh clothes for my Guru Dev, fresh washed and ironed, you know, under circumstances you will never imagine. Everything so sober, you know, everything undescribable. And it was so clean. Then I was standing in the room of Gurudev and I was thinking, oh, here he's eating, that's not clean. Here's, he's doing this, that's not clean. Here sometimes flowers are rotting, that's not clean. Here, I didn't find any place to put it. And Gurudev was still in the shower, I couldn't give him. So I was standing there completely bewildered. He's coming out of the shower and saying, what are you doing? Sorry, Guru, if I didn't find a clean place to put your clothes. But just lay down and go. From such moments, something was hanging in my mind and telling me, are you crazy, guy? Something is wrong. Couldn't you understand? So it's a completely different if even from the material point of view, if you cook for yourself or you cook for someone you, you love. You will even put something inside which actually you don't like so much, but you know he likes or she likes. But you will not think about yourself. You will think, oh, she will like it so much. Yes, maybe a little bit more. I don't like it, but give her a little bit more. She likes it so much. So how to come in a world where everyone wants to give the purest love to others by rules and regulations. <laughs> so we are so lucky that actually Chaitanya Charit Amrita is giving so clearly advice and Prabhupada is giving so clear advice. I mean, really, I don't know why I didn't read that before. Maybe I read it, but I didn't understand anything. But now it's so clear. So, an example is given here by Ramananda Rai. The unspoken example in this connection is the goddess of fortune, 
who worshipped Lord Krishna in order to attain his pastimes in Vrindavan. So Lakshmi herself tries to worship Krishna, to come to the pastimes of Vrindavan. However, due to her opulent lifestyle, she could not attain the service of Krishna in Vrindavan. So we can see if even Lakshmi, I mean, she's not just someone, someone, <laughs> it's Lakshmi Devi. If she cannot, what to speak of us, in this mood, it's not possible. Text 232. When Lord Sri Krishna was dancing with the gopis in the Rasa Lila, the gopis were embraced around the neck by the Lord's arms. This transcendental favor was never enjoyed by the goddess of fortune or other consorts in the spiritual world. Nor was such a thing ever imagined by the most beautiful girls from the heavenly planets, whose bodily luster and flavor exactly resemble a lotus flower. And what to speak of worldly women who are very beautiful according to the material estimation. This was from Srimad Bhagavatam 1047.16. Text 233, Itta Shuni Prabhu Tanre Kaila Alingana, Dui Jane Galagali Karena Krandana. After hearing this, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Ramananda Rai and both of them clasping one another's shoulders began to cry. This is also very important. They began to cry both. Actually, they were both in a situation where they actually could not really openly show their feelings, right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sanyasi, <laughs> speaking with Ramananda Roy, some householder, a fallen person from the view of the uh, society. What they have to do together and how they can cry together and hug each other so we can understand. This is the world of fear, but they are living in the world of love. And that's why they are crying. And at least touching the shoulder of, the, of each other. If they cannot firmly embrace and be completely in ecstasy because of the circumstances. Text 234. 
The entire night was passed in this way, in ecstatic love of Godhead. In the morning they both departed to tend to their respective duties. Before departing from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ramananda Rai fell to the ground, caught hold of the Lord's lotus feet, and then spoke submissively as follows. So this is what you said, Radhacharan, this example, in which mood he is falling to the Lord's lotus feet, <laughs> catch hold of them. Now we will hear. Sri Ramananda Roy said, You have come here just to show me your causeless mercy. Therefore, stay here for at least ten days and purify my polluted mind. But for you, there is no one who can deliver all the living entities. For you alone can deliver love of Krishna. So how you understand that, this conversation? Please share. I will cry. Um, Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai, uh, he, he is Vishakha and he says, uh, I, sorry, I not remember, when Mahaprabhu uh, gave darshan to Ramananda Rai, after this conversation. It's actually the end of this explanation from Ramananda Rai, mm. He's, he was explaining to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he asked him how to actually um, uh, execute this, this way, so this, this way of bhakti. What, what we should do to come to this platform. So, Ramananda Roy explained it now, before he said that I know that you are talking and I'm just making my mouth move. But anyway, it's your wish and I want to serve you, so I do. So now this is the end of this uh, exchange and now Ramananda Roy is falling to the feet. Um, it's for me not clear what, uh, how Ramananda Rai is uh, see on Mahaprabhu. He sees Srimati Radhika or Krishna. If Srimati Radhika, then it can be understand why he is speaking like this. Because she knows how Srimati Radhika is so kind, so merciful. We heard just not so long ago, how Shubhadev um, gave one story, how Krishna decided to distribute something, I don't remember. And anyone who came to him with some particular size of vessels, he gave it. But when Srimati Radhika saw it, she started to cry. And he asked her, why are you crying? And she explained, if someone coming with big vessel, you're giving so much. If someone come in with small vessel, you give a little bit. If someone will come without with a vessel, you will not give anything. 
I will not do like this. I will give big vessel and fill it completely. <laughs> this is Shumatera Dika's first. What is why? And also, why Advaita Chari, uh he called Mahaprabhu? Because it's Kali Yuga. Krishna is so much for the story. So much justice in him. But Shumatera Radhika is very, very merciful. What Without Shumat Radhika, no possible to distribute love in Kali Yuga. What I, what I understand. Wonderful point. As you said, if somebody would like to have Mantri Bhav or Kinkri Bhav or not, What would be the mood of Radharani? She would give a bigger pot and would give the highest, isn't it? So Mahaprabhu is giving the highest. You may be in Saki bath, yeah, but anyway, I will flood you anyway with Mandre bath. It's not her sty bath now, but anyway. Then take it as sanctuary, but take it. In my feelings, you know, this is not tattva. We cannot discuss about this. But in, in my heart, he is falling now because he understood what he gets, actually. He understood that the mercy is so high. But now you came, you just give me this, and now you want to go? No, you cannot go. You have to stay longer, at least 10 days, and purify my heart. Like you said, spiritual body also means purified, uh, could be also purified, right? Isn't it? We were just talking about this. So please stay longer. Purify my heart more. If it's the true or not, I don't care. I want to understand it like that. Because we, we know that Radharani's, Radharani's mood is to give, 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 and she's giving always more than someone accept, uh, wants to accept or expects. She's always flooding everyone. And that why he is telling there is no one who can give this except you. Only you, Mahaprabhu, only you. Who can give this? Krishna? No. Therefore, stay here for at least 10 days and purify my polluted mind. But for you, there is no one who can deliver all the living entities. For you alone can deliver love of Krishna. You alone. It's obvious so. from the words of this uh, verse, but uh, Ramandarai looking at Mahaprabhu as Srimad Radhika, not as Krishna, because you can give love for Krishna. Who can give love for Krishna? Krishna? <laughs> the Lord replied, Having heard about your good qualities, I have come here. I have come to hear about Krishna from you and thus purify my mind. Just as I have heard from you, I have also actually seen your glories. 
As far as Raja and Krishna's pastimes in loving mood are concerned, you are the limit of knowledge. So what is the limit? Sakibhav? <laughs> I think it's very clear, isn't it? As far as Rata and Krishna's pastimes in a loving mood are concerned, you are the limit of knowledge. We have, we have discussed so many times this. Who can know more about Radha and Krishna's pastimes? Only who is most close to Shrimad Radhika. Who sees all this pastime through her. It's like Rupa Jaira. <laughs> but here, Mahaprabhu telling Turamandaravis. This means he, he recognized that he received his gift. And Ramandarai also told him, Sorry, I don't know what I'm telling. I'm just doing what you want. And he become like a channel. And then it's coming through you. You're also feeling, you also realize, you also receive this. Yeah. So there's also a small purport from Srila Prabhupada. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found Ramananda Rai to be the best authority in transcendental knowledge of loving affairs between Rata and Krishna. In this verse, the Lord actually states that Ramananda Rai was the limit of this knowledge. So when you can say it's the limit only if there is Manjari buff, because this is the limit. Isn't it? And then he's also saying something very interesting in the next verse, text 240. Dasha dinera kakata yavat amijiba tavatomara sanga chatite nariba. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued to say nothing of ten days. What about ten days? Forget about ten days. As long as I live, I shall find it impossible to give up your company. Both. You and I shall remain together at Chakanat Puri and we shall pass our time together in joy talking about Krishna and his pastimes. In this way, they both departed to perform their respective duties. Then in the evening, Ramananda Roy returned to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thus, they met time and time again, both sitting in a secluded place and jubilantly discussing the pastimes of Krishna by the question and answer process. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked the questions. And Sri Ramananda Rai gave the answers. In this way, they were engaged in discussing throughout the night.
So I think it's very clear that they actually went on with their mad exchange. <coughs> and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was flooding him more and more in all detail, details. And some of these details will come now also. If you are ready. Oh, okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> Prabhu kahe konvitya vitya mache sara roi kahe krishna bhakti vina vitya nahi ara On one occasion the Lord inquired of all types of education which is the most important Ramananda Rai replied, There is no education that is important other than the transcendental devotional service of Krishna. There is a purport by Srila Prabhupada. Text 245 to 257 are all questions and answers between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy. In these exchanges, there is an attempt to show the difference between material and spiritual existence. Education in Krishna consciousness is always transcendental and is the best of all forms of education. Material education aims at increasing the activities of material sense gratification. Beyond material sense gratification is another negative form of knowledge called Brahmavidya or transcendental knowledge. However, beyond that Brahmavidya or knowledge of the impersonal Brahman is knowledge of devotional service to the Supreme Lord Vishnu. This knowledge is higher and higher still is devotional service to Lord Krishna, which is the topmost form of education, according to Srimad Bhagavatam. So the rest I will skip because this is not our mood. Sorry, <coughs> yeah. Sorry if I interrupt you. No, please, but, please. Uh, <laughs> I just like to say that here, uh, Sri Prabhupada refer to Sri Bhagavatam. So the the high qualification is to worship Sri Krishna. He tell. And then Srimad Bhagavatam come before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the difference is to worship Sri Krishna here, not Sri Radha and Krishna. How we usually to say, no? Just this. Yes, it's. I think it's it's very um, important that you stay in your mood and you see these little details and uh, 
understand, like you said now, that there is a different, uh, a different mood before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, actually. Chaitanya Charit Amrita is something completely else than Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam was there already in former times, before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, yes. But anyway, I don't think that this is actually the main um, uh, distinction or the main point why Prabhupada sometimes say like this and sometimes say like this. I think it depends on the mood he is adopting in this moment. At least this is my, my uh, uh, how you say, Beobachtung? I, uh, my understanding after watching this actually, I didn't find any very clear rule. I don't know. Did you? Yes? Ah, okay. Then, thank you for this information. Observation, that's the point, yes, from my observation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. Oh, I have, I have to, to actually uh, be more aware when I read other books from Prabhupada, if this is really the rule. Thank you for putting out this point. I think Prabhupada is very sensitive, actually, in all his writings. Um, Lord of Energy, can I add something? Yes, of course. Um, Sri Rupa Goswami gave definition of Uttama Bhakti and the word Krishna in this um, definition according to explanation of Acharis means not only Krishna but everything that is connected to him. Mm. That's a good point, also interesting point, because we, we tend to, to see it now in, in, uh, in the Rasika view, but most of the books are not written in this uh, Rasika mood, actually. So, Krishna means the whole, the whole thing. Radha is included, and the gopis are included, and Brindavan, and all, all this is actually, actually, this is, everything is included, even different kind of moods. Because if you write something, you cannot put out some people in, 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 in other moods than your own. <laughs> it wouldn't be wouldn't be very nice. So it's more like a gopi. When we say gopi, sometimes mantras are meant, but sometimes are also other moods. So it's more like uh, the roof of the of the whole theme. Sri Bhaktan Sai Prabhupada, how he is calling Krishna, supreme personality of God means the God has many personalities. For example, Yashoda Nandana, small boy of Malavya Yashoda, or Gopal, the friend of Subhal, and Mangal, or Madhuresh Krishna. It's different personalities. But the supreme personality of God, Krishna, means that's that person who is created by the love of Sri Radhika, with me, not possible to separate with Krishna, Supreme Personality of God, from Sri Matiradik. And they live in Manjaris also, because without Manjaris, no possible with Krishna not appeared without Manjaris. Yes, very, 
Good point. Krishna will not go anywhere without his concerts. As we can see, Radharani also had to come here for this Bombrindavan Lila. She didn't want. <laughs> but of course, for Krishna she did because of her love. And then she, she swear that she will not open the eyes since he will be there. That's why she was blind. And when he came and touched her, then she opened her eyes, actually. Ah, that's love. And we are so happy that actually we are part of this love. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy are giving us hints, very clear hints. Go for it. So text 246. Kirti Gana Matya Jivara Kon Bhata Kirti. Krishna Bhakta Bhaliya Yan Bhaliya Yan Hara Hai Kyati. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then asked Ramananda Rai, out of all glorious activities, which is the most glorious? Ramananda Rai replied, that person who is reputed to be a devotee of Lord Krishna enjoys the utmost fame and glory. And here we can also say, for example, Srivapada himself, how he is known in this world. He's, he is reputed as a pure devotee of Lord Krishna, mostly. But we know actually who is he and why he is reputed. His prayers to Krishna when he started his uh, preaching in America, in the boat, uh, in which mode he did his prayers. Hmm. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, the greatest reputation a living being can have is to be a devotee of Krishna's and to act in Krishna consciousness. In the material world, everyone is trying to be famous by accumulating a large bank balance or material opulence. There is a steady competition among kamis attempting to advance in a wealthy society. The whole world is turning in accordance with that competitive, competitive mood. However, this kind of name and fame is temporary, for it lasts only as long as the temporary material body exists. One may become famous as a Brahmakyani, an impersonalist scholar, or one may become a materially opulent person in either case. Such reputations are inferior 
to the reputation of Krishna's devotee. In the Garuda Purana it is said, In this age of Kali, the fame of one who is known as a great devotee is very rare. However, such a position is superior to that of the great demigods like Brahma and Mahadev. This is the opinion of all spiritual masters. So there are some quotations who actually underline what Prabhupada said. But I think the point is very clear. The highest fame one can have is to be the lowest servant of the servant of Sri Radha. And this is included in the reputation of Krishna's devotee. Like Prabhupada is writing it here. Because this includes all kind of different devotees. But why was Prabhupada so successful? We may meditate on that. For me it's actually clear, I understood why he was so successful. Uh, so Guru told here many times, this someone, uh, they will be the Shrimad Radhika there and Krishna will try to do anything for uh, this person. And one thing more is written here, uh, the greatest reputation of Ling Ben can, can have is to be a devotee of Krishna and to act in Krishna consciousness. And once Shilnar and Gassan Maharaj asked, uh, he, he explained from uh, how Shil Prabhupada, from where he took his uh, word, Krishna consciousness. And he explained it's coming from the words of Shil Goswami, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati. From these uh, words of Shil Goswami coming this Krishna consciousness. That Mati is completely stuck with. All day thinking about Krishna, it's Shimadradika's consciousness, what also we can hear from Shimadradika. So someone who is actually really following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has to understand the mood of Mahaprabhu, otherwise he cannot. So actually it's very clear, whoever is really going out and preaching this, he has to have a base. So it's very clear what kind of devotee Prabhupada is. Gaudiya Sampradaya means to accept the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to understand what is Panchatattva. Otherwise it's not Gaudiya Sampradaya.
And that means Manjuri Bhav is given. Otherwise, if we do not have this system, if we do not have revealed this secret which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually gave us, then it's not in that line. They may call it like that, but it's not. Isn't it, Radha Charan? <laughs> if somebody is not giving Manjari bath, then how he is following Mahaprabhu? How it's possible? They may say that they do, like a lot of people say they follow Prabhupada. But if you look deeper, you have to see, do they really? I mean, it's just, you don't, we don't have to, to blame anyone, you know, it's not, not, not a question of criticizing someone, but we have to see for our own good which people are in which mood and do they really distribute what they say? We have to know for us. We don't have to propagate that, but we have to know for us to be sure that we can stay in our mood. Stai means I have to also differentiate. They are talking like this, but actually do they have the same mood? Ah. Not really. Okay, so then let me go to that people who really have the same mood. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked another question. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, of the many capitalists who possesses great riches, who is the topmost? So who is the richest guy? Yeah, because people want to, to, to hear such things, isn't it? Who is the most richest person? Ramananda Roy replied, he who is richest in love for Radha and Krishna is the greatest capitalist. Wow. Huh? Why? Why is it so? It's not just a saying because we love to hear that, you know, it's, it's the truth. Because whoever is serving Radharani, Krishna is standing behind him. And when Krishna is standing behind him, all the devas are standing behind. And that means riches, glories, whatever you want, whatever you can imagine to have in material life, everything is standing there ready to serve you if you are in the seva of Radharani and Krishna, everything. That's why Prabhupada was so successful. He didn't accept one cent for him. Never. When people came, they came with ten thousands of rupees, hundred thousands of rupees or whatever, lakhs of rupees, Prabhupada asked how much it is and he was counting it. And if something would miss, he would say, you want to cheat Krishna? 100 rupee missing. He never saw himself that he is owning something he saw himself in the seva. This is Krishna's money. Do you want to cheat Krishna? You said it's 100,000, so it has to be 100,000. It's not his money. It's the money of Krishna. And this was very clear. Prabhupada was very exact in this. And I think this is also very good. 
because ego has no space to switch in, you know, especially things like money. You have to be very correct. It's not my money. It's Radharani's and Krishna's money. And I use it in the seva. Nothing belongs to me. Nothing. This body? No. Nothing. What you will keep? So that's why if you see yourself just as the servant of Radharani and Krishna, they are the richest, then of course you have all richness. Because all richness is standing on your side and wants to serve you. Because you are a servant of the servant, so they want to serve you.